Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to make a maze page. You can see I've already set up the button to jump to our maze. And we are going to call that uh, maze page. How about just maze, right? Um, we're going to use a lot of the same properties from our uh, fly ship uh, demo. So let's just go ahead and copy that uh, entire dictionary. I'm going to rename that maze. And uh, with that in mind, let's also just uh, duplicate out the uh, fly ship page because uh, we're going to make use of the uh, left, right, and uh, up and down buttons as well here. But uh, don't worry, I'm going to try to make it uh, as interesting as possible. It won't be a total uh, kind of redo of the same lesson. So we're going to go over here and just hit duplicate. And let's call that uh, maze. All right. And then again, just be sure you kind of deselect it, then go back to it. And uh, then you're sure you've got it selected. All right. So let's think about what we don't need. Let's get rid of all this stuff over here. And I noticed, as so I was duplicating this before, we didn't actually use a camera in this uh, scene, which is okay. We didn't uh, need to. The camera wasn't moving around or anything like that. So it, uh, you, you know, even if we had one, it wouldn't have really done much. But uh, we are going to bring in a camera uh, this time. And if you want to, you can just go ahead and uh, copy one that you've already got. So I'm going to do that too. And let's paste that on in there. Uh, it is uh, named the camera, and I uh, just want to be sure in the property list that I do have the initial camera setting, and uh, this uh, is definitely in the cover page. So let's go ahead and just copy that from there, and then just put it on into oops our settings. There we go, our initial camera, and we are going to um, make the camera follow around uh, one of the uh, nodes of the scene. So that'll be a little bit different. But uh, even before we set that up, let's go uh, back over here to the maze and make it so that our uh, GUI items, which you know, it's a, just this reference node right here, is, um, is a child of the camera. So anywhere the camera goes, these are going to follow along with it. And that's really easy. You just select it and then uh, specify that its parent is going to be the camera and then you can see you know notice if we move that guy around they are stuck right on in there so now let's start to arrange the uh, assets that I've already brought in here you can see I've got uh, sections of a maze these actually are all continuous pieces of uh, vector artwork. Well, they originally were vector. They're now uh, just pixel based. Uh, point is, though, is that uh, I can uh, use the alpha mask uh, function with them because there's not like a, at anywhere like a little island of um, uh, vector artwork. And we'll put a sad star in here. So basically, the star has to get out of the maze. And then one of the other things that uh, I've already imported in here is a, um, a dot atlas folder containing some pictures of a moon sleeping. So we'll uh, include that as well. And here we go. Let's see how quickly we can set this up. All right, so I'm going to drop in. Oh, and you know what? The um, Even before I do that, let me go ahead and select these directional buttons that, uh, that were in here before. And I'm going to parent them to the camera as well. So we're just going to put in there the camera. All right, so those are going to float around uh, as well with the camera. And let's start with uh, maze section one. And I'm going to give all of these just the same name as um, as the artwork. And I'm going to set the custom class to element, even though I, I didn't really need to add any properties in there for them. But uh, while we're just doing a lot of copying and pasting, you might as well, just in case you just determine down the road, oh, maybe I did need to do that. So at least any ones that you copied from this are also going to be uh, the element type. And you can see I've got the alpha mask on here, and it is making that nice little perfect uh, shape around it. So let's go ahead and just uh, let me make sure this is about where it should be. There we go. So we're going to copy and paste that, and then just change that to maze section 2. Maze section 2 might take me a little bit of work to remember where these um, go. Oh, you know what? I think I got it. There it is. And then let's get maze section 3 in here. Maze section three, uh, it might be around there. We'll know when we get our fourth one in here where that's supposed to go. All right, so the fourth, I'm thinking, let's get that out of the way for a moment. That looks like it fits right into, yeah, right about there. And as you can imagine, we're gonna send our a little star throughout this maze. 
Now, if I don't line this up right, there's probably going to be areas that the uh, star can't get through. So I do kind of have to keep my eye on that. All right, and I believe this part just kind of hooks in right there. Uh, makes a little dead end at that point. Okay, so that should be good enough to start with. Uh, let's drag out a color sprite. This is going to be our moon sleeping. And this one we definitely do want to be sure that we set as an element because one of the last things we'll do is um, test to see if the star has made it out of the maze and uh, collided with that. And we'll use the event listener there. Uh, we can begin with our uh, moon sleeping one texture, but let's open up the timeline find our moon sleeping there it is I'm just gonna type in here animate because I want to get the animate action out and uh, we're gonna animate with textures so as soon as you do that just uh, come over here to the show media library and you can find for yourself all the frames to include in there we go there we go so any of your dot atlas frames are going to be included in there. You can just drag them all in. They should come in in the order that you selected them. And then what you can do is, of course, loop these guys. We're going to loop them. And you can even hit the animate button to get a preview of what's going on over there. All right, so looks good. Let's fold that back down. And of course, you could add on top of that um, other SK actions, like you know, just a loop of it moving up and down. So let's put in here our sad star. There it is. So our little buddy has uh, got to get through the maze to get back to the moon. Doesn't really make much sense, I know, but uh, that's all right. And uh, now, you know what? Let me see if I can move everything but the. Oh, it's a little hard to do that. Oh, you know what? Let me move the camera. I just want to select everything and kind of shift it over a little bit so it's a bit more centered. All right, uh, and then let's get our little star in there. So drag this out, and I believe this is star in, if I can find the eye, there it is, star in maze. And we'll use that same name uh, to identify it. And of course, we do want this to be a custom class of element. And it is kind of tiny, but uh, what we're going to do is uh, emphasize this guy by adding a, uh, a particle emitter to it. Uh, and uh, let's go and set the, uh, the physics properties. I'm going to go with bounding circle, uh, just so if there is kind of a tight squeeze through here, I found that the circle works a bit better. And uh, we, we can put, uh, yeah, we can leave those on. That's all right. Uh, we're not. We're actually not going to apply physics impulses, though. We're going to move this guy uh, via it, um, an SK action. So those are less important this time around. And if you wanted to set the friction up to something super slippery, you could always put that at one. Uh, the friction, if um, it, well, zero is like sandpaper, and one is like glass. Put so put it that way. So if you want to do that for your kind of maze boundaries too, if there ever was a tight squeeze in here, it might. Uh, make its way through there a little bit better with the uh, friction set up at uh, one. Oh, and you know what? I might have just gotten that reversed. I think, sorry, I think these should all be zero. One, I believe, is like sandpaper. So reverse whatever, <laughs> whatever we did there. And yeah, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Zero friction. <laughs> All right, uh, and by the way, restitution is the bounciness. So if you ever had something that was bouncing off something else, uh, that uh, determines how bouncy it is. All right, we are just about ready to start uh, putting in our properties here. Oh, you know what? What's more fun, though, to put the emitter in at this point? Okay, let's do that. Uh, so we're going to drop an emitter in, and this is going to be attached uh, to the star. So what we're going to do is make the parent be star and maze. And you can see it's just kind of hanging off there. Let's put it right over top. And then what you can do is uh, put in a particle texture. So we've already got a, just got a, a very generic star in here. So let's uh, just use that texture for the everything that gets emitted. And uh, so the particles emitted are above the maze or anything else. Let's set the Z position up relatively high, like 300. And I don't think at this point you can hit animate um, to get a preview. You got to actually kind of birth some particles here. So try typing in 10 and then see what happens. You might not even get one at that point. Oh, there you go, you can kind of see one. It's uh, dying off uh, pretty quick though. So let's set the lifetime, uh, maybe something like 100. And a lot of these options, they, they have a just a variable range to them. So you could um, 
it could vary the range of how long these guys survive and uh, the position rotation all these other options in here what I'm gonna do is because uh, I kind of spent a while uh, tinkering with this myself is uh, just paste in the um, the emitter that I've got uh, tucked away in a file over here but you, you get the idea of what's happening so it's it's shooting out all of these this is kind of an odd effect uh, other other stars and uh, when you get them just right uh, they can do some pretty amazing things in fact there's some uh, particles stuffed in here already uh, just as examples for example the the fire.sks file that's a, quite a fancy one right um, and you could even drag those into your project too but in this case we're gonna um, delete that and I'm gonna sneak over here to this uh, version that I've already set up and bring this in. All right, so I'm going to paste that in. Usually, when you paste in something else like that, you do need to reparent it. So we're going to put in here star in maze. And now, there we go. That's the effect that I'm looking for. So if you want to take a look at the settings that I have, I'm just going to scroll down through here, and you can kind of pause them if you feel like it. So there you go. All right. And uh, last thing we could do is you'll notice that the maze could probably be a little bit bigger. That's um, yeah, I should have maybe exported it out a lot bigger. But uh, you know what we could do? We can actually make the camera zoom in. So for example, we could put in here a scale of uh, 0.8 and 0 0.8. And this will give you now an idea of what the, the framing of the camera. But another cool thing we could do is make it so that the camera always tracks the, the star. So the camera is going to move around as we move through here. Now remember, we've got our um, nodes and everything parented to the camera so they're going to stay in place uh, so it's a really neat effect and uh, if you want you could go ahead and start your camera over here it doesn't really matter because the setting that we're about to put into the property list is going to take care of that so uh, the setting for this and you can find it in your documentation under camera properties is going to be camera follows and then you just specify the node that you want the the camera to essentially track all right and you can even isolate this down to just the x or the y axis and you can even offset um, in that x and y uh, locate format uh, you know the relative um, point that the uh, the camera follows that node so it could be offset a little bit from the node uh, so anyway yeah let's put that in there so this is going to be camera follows and then that's going to be star in maze. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just give this a quick little test run on the iPad 2. So there you go. Uh, I, it's not a great test of the camera following the camera because we can't, uh, I mean, camera following the node because we can't move it yet, but uh, that'll change. I just want to kind of make sure that we get the, the framing and all that right. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's. Fold the, uh, actually, no, we need to, well, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. There we go. Fold those back in. And under our elements, for the up, down, left, and right, what we want to do, just to kind of change things up a little bit, is get rid of our impulse vectors. And we are going to run an action, but it's going to be, this time around, not a rotate one. We're actually going to move with it. So let's unfold each of these guys. And if you want, though, right now, you could. Oh, let's change this to star in maze. And get rid of that. And, you know, if there's nothing in here, you don't really need to have that in. But, uh, you know, we might want to add something later. All right, so under our actions, let's unfold this. We'll just uh, copy one of the ones we've already got. And we'll change it to move right. And then instead of a rotate to, we're going to put in here a move by. And you want to switch to this to a string value. And then we're going to use that X and Y format. So it's X comma separated from the Y with that closing squiggly bracket. So if we're moving right, uh, let's uh, bump them 20 pixels or 20 points, I should say, to the right. And then zero on the X axis. And uh, let's. Um, Let's make the duration a little bit quicker, about a half a second. So we're going to do that for all of our directions. So go ahead and just uh, pop them all in there. There we go. And of course, we want to change now just the 
CG points. Okay, so left. Oh, that should actually just be a negative. So I'll put in there negative 20. And then for moving up, that'll be a positive number. So we can put in there 20. And then 0 on the x and negative 20 on the y axis. And now all we have to do is change our rotate up to move up. This will be move down. Move left. Move right, and we should be at a point where we can test this. Okay, so you can see now, obviously the camera is uh, tracking with that, and I'm just clicking in all of my directions here to test them. And it's not the, obviously not the fastest maze, but uh, this is maybe about the correct speed for a kid, and it runs a little faster on the iPad, on the real device, of course. But uh, there you go, so we've got all of our directions in there. And uh, really all we need to do now is um, just detect when the, uh, when the star has exited the maze and has uh, found its way to the sleeping moon. So fold that back up. We still have our event listeners in here. We don't need this one. And uh, we can, I mean, the, the name of this one is appropriate. Listen to go to a new page. Uh, we don't need that because we're only listening for one thing the intersection of our star in maze with our moon sleeping. And we could have done that with a physics contact as well, testing each other. But uh, this works just as good. And um, well, obviously I'll test this, but you guys don't need to watch me go through an entire uh, maze, but I'm pretty confident it's going to work. Okay, and let's uh, move our little buddy down. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. So you got out of the maze. And we'll come back and talk about something else in the next lesson.